The All Seeing Guys podcast is part of Britpod Scene, an independent network of uniquely British podcasts that's always growing. Check out BritpodScene.com or follow Britpod Scene on Twitter to find out. Episode, then. isn't that just a fucking just a 110 beauty isn't episode of the podcast? Whoop, whoopty fucking do 110. <laughs> what other things are 110? Uh, fucking, hell, I don't know. Boom, got you on the spot. Yeah, if we, if I, I haven't got a list for that. I've bought myself some time. I haven't got a list for that. Holy oh, fuck! I haven't got a drink, though. Welcome to episode 110 of the All Seeing Guys. I, of course, am Greg. Yeah, that makes me Joe. That makes him Joseph Jackson. How are you? I've, I've all of a sudden quite drunk. Yeah, me too, actually. I know we were drunk in the last one, and it is just a common, like, it's a common sort of basic ingredient for <laughs> our uh, episodes. Formula. But I feel quite pissed. Oh, uh, yeah, I'm a... Yeah, I'm, I'm there. Let's I'm, see how long I'm, this lasts. I'm on a <laughs> like, You're the one that was like, I'm... I know, mate. I was one. just like, right, literally like five minutes ago, I was like, mate, I'm well up for this. And then I was just like, sat down and I was like, oh, shit. Um, how are you, Greg? Yeah, I'm good. I, I'm actually feeling... I'm actually a bit of buzz going on. Actually. Good, good, good. Quite good. good. That, might, that might perk me up a bit. Yeah, I'm carrying I'm probably, I might get another drink. You know what I'm saying? might honesty. get another fucking drink. I might get another drink. That might need like, to pause and get some ice. That sounds like a perfect time to go into a bit of geese dropping, where, of Fuck course, him. we hear snippets of over conversation heard to us from you and strangers. Perfect Amanda. What have you been listening to in public? Nothing. Having a listen. Well, I didn't think he was good looking at all. <laughs> Girl <coughs> in shop is what, <laughs> is what I have written down for that. Well, Girl in shop. That is a mighty opinion. Why is a girl session so much bigger? It's so sexist. Woman in Primark talking to herself. Jesus Christ. Primark's a fun one, isn't it? Now... <laughs> Last time I said this name wrong, and you apparently said it right. Marin. Marin. Marin actually sent us a geese job. Yeah, but now I'm paranoid that I'm saying it wrong. So, I'm just going to say it. Marin. For fuck's sake. <laughs> Marin, who did the uh, wankety wank of uh, Ritz and Cricket. Oh, yeah, that was episode, fucking great. Has sent us a geese job and an audio one. I don't know if she wants to play the message or not. Well, but well I, decided, I don't. I don't I, it's, it's, Greg, this this podcast's never been about what the viewer wants. Yeah, exactly. So or listener. So I'm I'm just gonna hold up to the mic and play it. If it's shit, I'll add it afterwards. Right. You, if you do have like <laughs> suggestions of what you want to hear from us, we'll kindly tell you to fuck off. So this is the geese job Mara's said. So I've been away for work for a couple of days last week, and um, on this trip we had the same food over and over again. So. Um, by the time we were flying back home, one of the girls on the trip um, said into the round, what's going to be the first thing you're going to eat when you get back to the UK? Um, to which one of the guys replied without hesitation, pussy. <laughs> now, the... F- <laughs> <laughs> Head <laughs> <laughs> oh, me own microphone, Greg. Head <laughs> the fucking mic. Steady on. Great gears dropping there. Fucking oh. head microphones. Yes, that guy. Now, ha- no, that guy has been waiting for that moment. I can guarantee you. No, every man wishes they're asked that question. Now, what's strange for me? Maybe this is like a weird Freudian thing. Is that when I first heard that, the first time I heard it, and it's like, and without hesitation, he said, she hesitates for a second. And in my head, I instantly weighed a cock. 
<laughs> I was like, someone's going to say cock. And then someone went pussy. And I was like, oh, that makes way more sense. I enjoyed and the... And I was uh, like, fuck, I'm, like, I'm, I, en- I'm I enjoyed the delivery. It was very good. It was just pussy. <laughs> I was expecting cock. I was expecting cock. <laughs> no, that's a geese drop in it. That's a fucking title of the. Yeah. That, <laughs> I was expecting cock. <laughs> that is. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good fucking title. I like that. On. Uh, another geese drop sent to us by a listener. Grim sent us this one. Yeah, buddy. This is the message. Uh, Grim's been fucking sending bear content. Oh, man. Man. Grim's on it, mate. He's got. He's fucking covering Much the area. Much appreciated. Much appreciated. Appreciate it, dude. Yeah. This one. <laughs> this is the message. Got a geese drop. Was in the toilets at Glasgow Central Station the other day. Oh, that's going to be good. Getting changed after being caught in a heavy downpour. Whilst getting dressed with soggy strange denim jeans, I heard a guy in the cubicle next to me stressing, <laughs> Come on, come on, get out of my ass! <laughs> <laughs> Made all my problems with jeans seem kind of small. <laughs> <laughs> get out of my ass. <laughs> Have you ever said that to a shit? No, I don't think I have. Never! Why would you? No. You know why? Because there's no one else present. <laughs> get out of my arse. Get out of my arse. Uh, get out of my arse. Get out of my arse. I banish you. Leave my backside. Oh, once and for all. I you're banish a... you from the depths of my bollock hole. Oh, you're a stubborn jobby, you are. Well, Love why it. stick in the mud you are, aren't you? <laughs> stick in the mud. Oh, you frame me now. Oh. I'm going to miss home and away at this rate. Oh, dear. Get out of me, arse. Get out of me, arse. James. James. You bastard. James, I can't get it out of me arse again. Can you come give it a tug? I, um... Jane, I don't know who asked me to do this, but I, yes. uh, I relentlessly did the Scottish action when I was in Edinburgh. You, you can't fucking help it. <laughs> now... We joke around with Ed a fair bit about winning the lottery. Oh, yeah, we do. And what we would do... We'd Ed's been the saying lottery. he wants to buy an island Well, for this the is last what I'm saying. Years. You know, Ed's, Ed's like, well, we'll buy the island. We'll buy an island. We'll live on an island. Yeah. And everything's like, you know, it's the island. And then we'll just fuck everything. If I win a couple of quid in the scratch card, he's like, what? Well, it's towards the island. Fund. <laughs> like, <laughs> Put it in the kitty. Like, yeah, it's towards the island fund. What is this, bread? <laughs> <laughs> but when we talk about... Winning the lottery. Yeah. We don't always think about the dark side. Winning the lottery. The uh, or what the? I mean, it does. There, there is a bit of a curse to it, isn't there? Exactly. So, what about those who have won in the past but are no longer rich? What happened to them? What? Yeah, your Michael Carrolls. Oh yes, it's a list of lottery winners who fucked it up. <laughs> yeah, dude. Here we yeah, go. dude. Now, this was brought to light because a recent lottery winner lost his 17 million fortune, <laughs> struck by the lottery curse. Dun, 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 dun. At the age of 23, Sharif struck lucky when hit the 17 million jackpot on the lottery. It was That's back madness, in 2007. He took advice from a real estate agent uh, and in his native Perth, Australia, and bought a pub. Luxury charter boat, a nightclub, and a lockland with waterfront views. He splurged more than 1.3 million. He splurged more than 1.3 million, around 723,500 pounds, on transforming the pub. But the venue in Midland Perth lost a staggering 1 million, 555,000, over a three year period. Wow. His other disastrous ventures also flopped. He lost all of it. But, but, that's, was, but that's the thing. Like he wasn't. A, he clearly wasn't like a businessman. No, and was just under the advice. advice. Yeah, he yeah. was. He was basically given investment advice that was just fucking shit. But also, didn't know what the fuck he was doing. Probably doesn't know how to fucking promote that shit. And it's just like. So that that just was just fucking enjoy it. Don't try and get more. That was recently. That's the reason that this this was published because it was like this guy has hit the fucking lottery curse. What about the others? Yeah. And now we hit the list. Oh mate, Britain was. We full can of back them. and forth these. There's a few here. We can back and forth these. Yeah. But first up is Colin and Christine Weir. <laughs> there they are. Joe's a picture for you. Oh, look at them. So delightful. In 2011, Courtney, Courtney, 
Is, that their, fa- names? Is that their names mixed Tried together? To say Colin. Yeah, it was. <laughs> In 2011, Colin and Christine Weir collected the largest amount ever for a British winner of the Euro Millions. But now the lottery curse has struck Colin 71 and Christine 62 and now set to go their separate ways. Oh, Jesus. How the much do they win? It doesn't say yet. The couple were married for 38 years. But in a statement confirmed they'd be living apart for some time. Wow. Apparently is they intend to divorce amicably. Amicably. So how have they lost their fortune? They're just splitting up. No, I think it's more of just like the curse. bad thing. Yeah, it's like, you right. know, money can't bring you happiness. And I okay, you can do Michael Carroll. Yeah, the fucking legend. Do you know Michael Carroll? Yeah. Oh right, is that the main one? Is oh is that that dude? Yeah. Oh shit, the bin man. Michael Carroll, the thirty-five-year-old, is possibly the most famous example of the curse of the lottery. It's not. He was a piece of shit. Right. He was as a person. Michael Carroll was known as the Lotto Lout as he blew his <laughs> 10 million fortune on flash cars and partying. And now the 35-year-old is working for a coal merchant's firm, chopping wood and lifting heavy bags of fuel every day. He starts work at 6 a.m. and is paid about 10 quid an hour, a far cry from his luxury lifestyle that saw him dubbed the king of the chabs. <laughs> he really was, though. Fucking hell, was he a piece of shit. He was just 19 when he won a 9.7 million Fuck. in 2002. Shit. But less than a decade later, he'd blown the lot. He blew 9.7 million in less than 10 years. Wow. His lavish lifestyle included new homes, drugs, parties, jewelry, and fast cars. He even built a banger racing track in his three acres of land surrounding <laughs> his six bedroom home in Norfolk. But in 2010, he applied for his old job back as the bin man had later earned 11 quid an hour in a biscuit factory. <laughs> he is now enjoying a more simple life as if in a fuel yard in, uh, fuel yard in Scotland. Uh, he told the son, my 10 million vanished in just 10 years and I don't have a home or a car. I call my own, but I'm not bitter. Easy come, easy go. He regularly works 12-hour shifts, creates new jobs, helping... Uh, oh, he's dropped his weight from 22 stone to 17. Yeah. Oh, good on him. So he's, yeah. <coughs> the stress, I imagine. <laughs> it is. I always imagine, though, like, the lottery is like Brewster's Millions. You, know, you remember that film? Yeah, of course. Brewster's with um, fucking... What's his name? Obviously, um, you don't have, like, a fucking time limit to spending on it, but, like, it's just... I don't know, man. I think you have to have a certain mentality to fucking like live with that shit yeah it's, it's de- all we it's want defi- it's definitely all we change. want is like all all of us want the easy life you yeah, know yeah, I mean? yeah we all of us everyone fucking deserves it just like a fucking glimpse of it but like how much is too much man yeah yeah i hear you, you know what i mean like I if i'm you. just if i'm just playing for me man and say Especially i want to mi- be thrust into it so like, s- suddenly you know what if i like if i fucking if i want a million pounds i i'm that i'm all right yeah. I'm sweet. I can't spend that in my lifetime. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you say you can't. No, but I'm not like I. But I wouldn't be fucking buying a lavish house because that's yeah. about fucking five hundred thousand. That's <laughs> half it gone already. What's the point in that for something I'm then going to have to fucking pay for somehow once all my money yeah. dries up? Like I would be. I'm a. I'm. I'm a, I'm a fucking simple man <laughs> with simple fucking needs. Like I don't. It's. You, just, you, you live within your means. You know what I mean. So you won't end up like Adrian <coughs> and Gillian Bayford. No, I won't. Adrian. Give me a million quid, I'll prove it. There they are. They're a happy, happy large couple. couple. Happy large couple. Yes, they are, aren't they? Adrian and Gillian Bayford were over the moon when they scooped up a massive 148 million. What the fuck? That is huge. Lottery That's win what win. I'm talking about, man. That is too much fucking In 2012. money. 2012. Who needs that? No one needs that money. No one needs that amount of money in a lifetime. But less than a year later, the couple would split and misery seems to have followed them wherever they go. <coughs> Last year, Gillian was charged with assaulting her ex-boyfriend, Gavin Inns, who said she had furiously branded him a gold digger, who, who she furiously had branded a gold digger. Wow. There was insufficient evidence to proceed with the case and the charges were dropped. She married convicted Forster. 
<laughs> That's fucking Brian that's, Dean's Those mate, those fraudsters though, man, they are fucking they know what they're doing. They know how to manipulate and they know how to fucking Things haven't been happy for her ex husband either. Following his divorce, Adrian has another failed two failed relationships behind him. His stable girl fiance his stable girl fiance, Samantha Burridge, thirty, left him in twenty seventeen and then he was dumped by waitress Lisa Kemp after she found messages to form a flame martyr. This is a good one, man. Look at this girl. This was the uh, youngest ever lottery winner. Oh, I'm on, mate, I know this girl as well. Yeah. Like 16 year old, didn't she? Well, she was 16 when she won it. Tell us about her. What's her name? Callie Rogers. Tidy. <laughs> <laughs> Callie was the youngest ever lottery winner when she scooped 1.8 million in 2003. Former shop worker Callie blew 18 grand on boob jobs, 250,000 pounds on cocaine, <laughs> another 300,000 pounds on clothes, and gave away half a million to friends and family. She told ITV this morning that she battled depression and tried to take her own life. Now in her 30s, she's much happier with her life as a working mum of three. Not knowing who liked me for me and having all the stress of all the money, I just wanted to go back to having a normal life. And still, I still struggle with the trust issues. Ooh. Jesus Christ. Wow. Wow. That affected her. Hang on, wait. However, there was more heartbreak for Callie. Last year, she was attacked after... Uh, <coughs> However, uh, so, uh, last year, uh, when she was attacked after she returned home following a night out, she was left with two swollen black eyes, a burst nose, swollen lips, blurred vision, two cracked ribs, and breathing difficulties in the cowardly, unprovoked Jesus. attack uh, at the then boyfriend Jack Murray's home. Wow. Her face was so badly bruised that she could not see her two youngest children for two weeks for fear of alarming <laughs> them. Her attackers were jailed. And she suffers from panic attacks following the incident. Damn. That's fucking shitty. What the fuck? What's that about? I don't know who did that. Look at her, mate. Look at her fucking face. Oh, Jesus Christ. Yeah, that she looks rough, weird. mate. Take she's your phone. She said surgery. <laughs> I know, right? Oh, it's fucked Boot up. jobs. Oh, mate, look at these. This is Roger and Laura Griffiths. I saw them. He's... <laughs> that is the most amazing picture. She's like, he's got a guitar and he's really happy in a park. All right, we'll wrap up this one. The couple won 1.8 million in the lottery in 2005. IT manager Roger and his teacher wife Lara both quit their jobs and bought a luxury barn conversion in North Yorkshire, costing 800,000. Yeah. That's like, wait, that's like half the fucking money yeah. gone already, see? What is the shit in point? Griffins also put 25,000 towards making a record with his old band from L Lancaster University. Oh, Jesus Christ. Despite investing in property and a beauty salon, the housing crash saw the value of their property plummet. The couple split in 2013 after their money had <coughs> gone, with both of them blaming one another for the loss in their fortunes. Oh, mate, I bet his band got brought up in arguments. You spent 25 grand on your stupid fucking dream! You've ruined everything, you and your fucking band. Where are you now? No, we spent 800000 on this stupid fucking barn. Your fucking band and your shit fucking songs. Oh, wait, you've got to do, you've got to do this one. You've got to wrap up this one. All right. This one's actually... Oh, Jesus Christ. This Jane Park. Jane Park says the lottery win ruined her life. <laughs> really? Because she's actually very beautiful. Jane was the UK's youngest Euro Millions winner, netting one million jackpot. She quit her eight job, uh, <laughs> eight job, uh, eight, uh, eight quid an hour job as an admin temp, but says life was easier before her big win. Jane, now twenty three, has uh, even offered to pay someone sixty grand a year to date her. She is launching a website where blokes can apply to be her boyfriend for sixty thousand pounds annual allowance, so they can wine and dine her. A source told how she will film the interview process for a documentary set to air next year. She has also spent thousands on cosmetic surgery since her win, which she says has ruined her life. Jane previously said, at times it feels like winning the lottery has ruined my life. Doesn't. Your decisions have ruined your life. You have made shitty decisions. Loads of surgery? Fuck. <laughs> Loads of surgery and paying... Right. She only won a million. How long? Like 60 grand a year, yeah. which is a, an, a phenomenal job offer. Yeah, yeah, honestly. yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's what it is. It's not dating her. It's a job offer. Yeah. yeah. It's, you're a pretty woman in that. You're I'm fucking Julia now. Roberts. 
I thought it would make it 10 times better, but it's made it 10 times worse. That's because you are a fickle fucking person. Damn. Dickhead. That last one's bullshit, man. That's the lottery hasn't ruined her life. Her fucking, I stand by that. Her fucking decisions are what ruined her life. Deciding she has to pay men to fucking date her. And then to just like whack a load of fucking surgery to your face and fucking body. <laughs> whack a load. Just... It's like, yeah, lock I'd that I'd like off. you to whack a load of surgery on me, Lock please. that off and put that there. Imagine if that's some of the, den- the dentist, how the fucking like doctor or surgeon spoke. <laughs> now we're just going to uh, whack this on you. <laughs> we're just going to whack a surgery on you. We're just going to whack you open you. and remove your liver. We're just going to whack a surgery on you, never mind. Just whack a surgery. One surgery, please. Non-specific. Man, this couple fucking. <coughs> they you fuck. know what? You know what I would like because in in with the lottery and when it is a large sum of money just given to you in one big fucking go, that's that's daunting. Yeah, of course. You're just like, yeah, yeah, what yeah. the fuck? You have all these like visions of grandeur that you're suddenly able to just like I can fly, make, make come true, and you know it's it is just that is just like you you have this boredom about it. What I have seen though in the lottery and what I think is a much better fucking idea. Is there is there is a game that you can play where you receive ten grand every month? Oh for yeah, like man. Thirty years. Yeah, that's amazing, isn't it? The concept of that. Imagine winning that. Is is I think that is the best concept the lottery have ever fucking yeah. done. It is it is just uh, it's a it's a substantial amount of money that is not millions and millions that won't roll over. It is just that for ten years for thirty years. Oh yeah. Ten grand. Could you? You? It would. It would take a fair bit of effort to spend yeah, ten grand yeah, a yeah, month. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It would. Yeah. You know. Yeah, it would. Like that's fucking. That is. That is. I. That's awesome. I'd play that in a fucking heartbeat. I'm gonna start playing that shit. Yeah, I'd do it online. Oh. It's easy. That's interesting. Mm. And whenever I win, it's automatically into my. It's already in my account. What into like your 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 account account. Oh, it's in like my um, account in lottery, but I just press empty funds and it puts it in my bank account. Jesus. Straight away. That's madness. Yeah. So that time when I fucking bought that lottery ticket and then won and then like won like 60 quid on the scratch card with the willings on the website, it automatically yeah. went to my account. I was like, yes. How does it, how does it do it though? Why yeah, does that happen? What, if you, it, you set it up. With a, oh, what? Even with a scratch card though? You can play scratch cards on the website. Is there like a? Oh, you do it on the website. Yeah, you can right, do it. Okay. You do it on the website. Yeah, I yeah, thought yeah. you meant like you were buying a you were buying right. a scratch card and you won it and yeah. it immediately. Just there is a small over. section of you just scratch with a mouse, scratch the card, but there's also like games made for the fucking computer. You know, there's a lot more animation going on, a lot yeah, more yeah, going yeah. on the stuff. Like it's all gambling, isn't it? Oh yeah, it's all gambling. Yeah, it's all fucking fixed and it shit. It makes the lottery. It looks like the national lottery turns into lab bro. But the odd like, times when I do play the lottery. Or well, the rare times, so yeah, when I play the lottery, usually the beginning of the month, I'll have a go. Um, I usually put a tenner in, buy like two tickets, and then I have a little go on the fucking games with like yeah, the last yeah, like yeah. fiver. And I'm like, ooh. Well, that's it. it, man. If you don't, if you don't, if play, I win, you don't win, if it? I win anything, it goes straight. I've been quite lucky. A lot of time when I do it, I end up winning like a fiver back, which brings me back up to what I put in. Yeah, yeah. So I've not lost anything. That's it. You just, you've had some fun on a game. <laughs> exactly. I've had a good time. You had a Gambling. good time on a game. Gambling it's is not fantastic. a big deal. It's not a big deal. Gam- it's not fantastic. Don't quote me on that. Sorry. Yeah, man. It's, yeah, I'll have a look into that. Um, but... I don't really like gambling, which is weird. Like in like Las Vegas, I didn't go near the tables. I really? Think, yeah. I didn't I'm intrigued anywhere. by like I I I'm intrigued by like um, poker, but not for the money aspect of it. Yeah. I I kind of like the the actual game side, not the not the betting side of it. I like the the odds and I like the you know right. the, the way they play it to sort of like lure you into a full sense of security and the sort of psychology of it. I mean, I'm sure that, young people still play it, but it's definitely something that's kind of come with us because, like, my older cousins, I remember, used to play it quite a lot with the, when they were younger. Yeah. I never knew how to play it, but I'd see them playing it with matchsticks because they were too young to yeah. gamble. I don't know but, how to do, like, but, five card, but, but I get the gist of it, but, like, uh, Texas Hold'em. Yeah. Like, right, yeah. But they all, they all knew these games of that age and played them because, you know, there wasn't PlayStations and fucking no, stuff that's like it. that. It was different. But now, that probably, now the new generation probably don't, and even when there not. were PlayStations, there weren't like poker games or yeah, like, exactly, yeah. 
you know, still I a mean, game that people played. Yeah, a lot. that's it. That's Whether the thing. These days, not, like on your PS, fun. on your PS4, or your fucking Xbox, you can find like a a fuck around poker game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's all just online, and it's all like you know, you can play online or you can just play against a computer, and it's all just like you know, it's all there. Like you know, oh, you've won this much money, but yeah. it doesn't exist because it's not real. Like, <laughs> all this shit, like it's just yeah. What do you mean it's not real? Damn I've, it! I've been, I've like, I, I do play like a, a poker game, and I get like the understanding of it and that, but it's like it's it's not like you're playing an actual person. There's uh, you know, you're playing a computer, and you just have to just fucking. You can outsmart a computer or poker. I remember it's playing it at an ex girlfriend's house once. Like loads of people, people were around. I remember Pete from Nat Jax was there. I've played, yeah, like, I've played with um, the guys in Earth Tide. Oh, did you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We all had like a poker night. It was really, really good. Yeah, I had a good night, but I didn't know what the fuck I was doing. Nah, but it was like um, we all had chips and stuff, and I think the thing was, it was like we we all put like a fiver in the kitty, and right. whoever had the most, whoever had the most chips at the end of the night, won the kitty. So although we all had like a, a set amount of chips, these were just what we played with, but it was the kitty that was up for grabs. Right, I'm with you. And it was, you know, six of us playing, so a fiver in each, that's 30 quid. Right. Ooh. It was good. Ooh, it was gambling. good fun. It was good fun. Yeah, gambling, where we, eh? Like high <laughs> and, you know, you're all money. like, everyone's kind of, you know, you are taking it serious, but there's people who haven't played, so you're going slowly, you're not taking a piss, <laughs> you're making sure everyone's kind of on a you're little ground. You're not taking a piss, right? fucking hell. I mean, you, you, you are urinating. Right. There's, Ooh, there's breaks. That kind of game, is it? Yeah, it's, man, it's, uh, it's an interesting sort of thing. But, like, you know, things like crabs and dice and stuff like that in Vegas, I, I wouldn't have a clue. No, I didn't. The only other thing I'd probably go near is, like, one of those fucking quarter slot machines. Right, yeah. You, it is literally money yeah, in, yeah, pull yeah. a lever, nothing, yeah. go again. Yeah, I think we did one of those. And one of, it's not again, like, it's really not like your, your fucking fruit machines in the pub. You know what I mean? Soon as like, the thing is, if you go up to any of them, as I said, and just start playing them, eventually somebody, a waitress will come over and be like, yeah. we'll join a drink. It's free. Yeah, that's like, it. Because you're playing the machines. They want to encourage you to stay. As soon as you went new one, you ah, oh, you want a drink? Yeah. And it's a, and you don't pay for it. Do you? And if you stood no, if you stood by them, they're just watching like what they're doing. Oh, uh, I have a jack, they're jack block, coke. They're blocking the machine. Oh uh, yeah, just, I'm gonna need a, a large drink in a pint glass. <laughs> as large as you have. Talking, I'm also gonna need another glass for my urine. I'm gonna urinate myself in your floor urinate, right? so many times. In fact, I'm doing it right. Now, nope, nope, now, no, yes, oh, it's happening. God. Thank you, Judith. Mind your step, clean that up. <laughs> so, talking about people that won the lottery, and then there was obviously a lot of them split up. Yeah, this story I picked up recently, which I might pass over to you. It's quite, oh, an, really? in, it's quite an interesting uh tale. Oh, well, look, considering. <laughs> <laughs> Considering that a couple episodes we talked about dating and relationships with Ed, yeah. that is why this story caught my eye. Why is James Franco the <laughs> I think it's an ad. <laughs> <laughs> He's behind that. everything, that oh, Franco. Right. Fucking Franco. Um, the Bumble match who married on their first date have divorced after two months. Now, Bumble, I imagine, is like an online dating app or something, yeah? Yeah, or like a kid's play day or something. <laughs> Weird. Uh, remember a couple of months ago when we ran a story about the Bumble match that got married on the first day and jetted off to Las Vegas to celebrate? How zany was that? So they got married on their first date? Yeah. I'm okay. assuming that we'll get the full gist of this story. Yeah. Well... As I'm sure many of you predicted, including us over here, the marriage has ended up going too, uh, hasn't <laughs> ended up going too well, and the couple have now ended up divorced after just a couple of months of marriage. Did anyone out there really think that was going to work? If you remember the original story, then you might recall that they weren't really giving themselves the best chances of success as their <laughs> as after their initial marriage, Sarah Elliot and Paul Edwards decided to move in with one uh, <laughs> with not one. Oh shit. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> Lord, did this get better. I'm going to start again. If you remember the original story, then you might recall that they weren't really giving themselves the best of chance of success. Uh, as after their initial marriage, Sarah Elliott and Paul Edwards decided to move in with not one, but two of Sarah's ex-boyfriends. <laughs> <laughs> They also, what? they also both happen to be called Paul as What's well. What's happening? She's collecting Pauls. Oh, she's collecting Pauls. <laughs> Gotta catch them, Paul. <laughs> Pokey Paul. Pokey Paul. 
Paul will gotta catch the <laughs> Paul. <laughs> gotta catch the pokey Paul. <laughs> pokey Pauls. Um, <laughs> so yeah, Pick-a-poo. they moved in with they moved in with two of our ex boyfriends, both called Paul. Honestly, this was <laughs> like this was ever ever going to work under any circumstances. Anyway. It only took two months until Paul decided he wanted out. Sarah isn't phased though, where she's decided monogamy isn't for her and has already embarked on a relationship with two men aged 27 and 29. Nice. You go, girl. Here's what she had to say to the son. My marriage may be over, but it has opened up a new world for me. I no longer believe monogamy and marriage is the uh, be-all and end-all. Now I am living the polyamorous lifestyle. I'm loving it. My rainbow hair is the embodiment <laughs> of the new me, strong, confident, and ready for whatever the weather. I wasn't initially attracted to Paul, but he seemed laid back and nice, and I wanted to be swept away in the moment. <laughs> she is fucking insane. Yes. I love kinky parties and role-playing. And although Paul was not an... Uh, or, f- or fate? A-U-F-A-I-T. Faith. What? Or faith. With, uh, with that world, he was open to it. I thought I'd met my match in and out of the bedroom. Ooh. At first, at first, all three Pauls got on well. We were one big, happy, albeit unusual family. But my husband was very jealous of one of my Pauls <laughs> who I had a long-term relationship with and who shared, <laughs> and who shared the mortgage. Oh, God. Everyone was getting on well. We were playing a board game and chilling at home together. Paul, but Paul got funny because I was apparently sitting two inches closer to my ex on the sofa. He accused me of still being in love with him. After that night, the atmosphere turned sour and both ex Pauls started to hide in their rooms. It should have been a, <laughs> it should have been a huge red flag. Yes. Yep. I understood my Paul's... When, way <laughs> before then, I think. I understood my Paul's fears as it was a weird setup. I'd sometimes be with my ex in his room comforting him, ha- but leaving the door open to appease my husband. But Paul would storm in and accuse me of sleeping with Paul. <laughs> Jesus. This is insane. This is fucking insane. <laughs> Despite everything, I don't regret my relationship with Paul. Which one? <laughs> which one? <laughs> which one? Because I haven't learned so much about myself and I am much stronger and confident now. She looks fucking insane but i am never dating another paul again it is a rubbish name anyway yeah i'm so sorry i want to apologize on to behalf all pools. of this woman for all pools all pools it's a out fine there. name it's an absolutely lovely name it's a, it's a standing name it's a, it's a reliable name a comforting well, name is paul it's just, oh jeez comforting name just that's fucking mental that is a bit mental three pools <laughs> <laughs> I can't remember what cartoon it is, but it's been in my head for fucking months. I want to say Futurama, right? But I could be, or it might be Simpsons. When someone it's, someone makes a joke and then it cuts away to like, I think it's, it's, it's a sitcom, and it cuts away to a sitcom, and it's and it's a guy like it's a priest at a wedding. And he's marrying a couple. Yeah. And there's two grooms. Like she's marrying two like two guys show up to marry her. Yeah. And then the clip of the feast goes, one groom? Just two grooms? <laughs> oh my medication. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. That's yeah. fucking. That and, is a that is a weird setup though. And for some reason, that felt like an agony. Arm and for one. some reason, that's why I bought this remind me of it. Yeah. One pool, just two, two pools, pool, three pools. Oh <laughs> my heart! And I, could... I lie. I think these are my pools. These are my pools. I'm taking the pools paddling. <laughs> <laughs> pool. <laughs> pool. <laughs> Hang on. Let me see if I can get this out. I'm taking the pools to Niddles. Wait, wait, wait. Let me see if I can get this out. (laughs) Paul. I'm taking the pools to the paddling pool. (laughs) Yeah. All the pools. All the pools. All the pools. (laughs) Opening the car door. Come on, pools are running like excited dogs. Paul, 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 Paul. Paul, 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 (laughs) Paul. Like seagulls. Down, Paul. All right, Paul, calm down. Oh, these are my pools. Do you think she'd like had to add numbers? This is my cat pool. This is my goldfish this is pool. This pool one. This is pool two. I'm working on my postman. This is my He's husband, also pool, pool three. Postman's good pool. I'm going to get him. You wait. I'm warming up to it. He's open to the idea. I can tell. 
That is just so fucking These bizarre. pools are boring me. Rubbish name. That is... Oh, I just don't like that kind of person. What pool behaviour? Appalling behaviour. <laughs> oh, 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 You have soiled this room. Oh, hello. Oh, I'm going to be sick. Yes, <laughs> look at that. Oh, God, I've got to throw up. You fucking dirty, dirty well, bastard. Well fucking played. Well played. I'm well fairly played. fucking chuffed with that one. I'd, I'd say I'm fairly fucking fucked. Yeah, I'm pretty fucked as well. As we're feeling pretty fucked, we thought, why not? Feeling. It's a nice evening out. It's dark. It's late. It's like fucking 20 past 11. So it's dark, but it's warm. So we thought, you know what? It's hot in here. Why don't we just go for a little wonder Let's outside? Have a little wonder. Have a little wonder. So we're going to take the Zoom mic with us and go for a little wonder. We're not saying anything of worth will be recorded if anything is recorded, but... That could happen next. That'd be exciting for you, wouldn't we, it? We won't, we won't subject ourselves to the pressure of being amusing. Yes, we won't. Going for a wonder. You know what, Joe? Let's take this podcast outside, you son of a bitch. All right. Shut right. up. Shut up, keys. All right, we're having a wonder outside. Nice. Yeah, so, it's nice, isn't it? It's a lovely evening. It's a nice evening. I feel like this is what... We're not wearing cardigans. No, this is what couples do. Yeah, nice little wonder. They they sit at home, and then they're just like, one of them will turn to the other and just go, should we have a walk? <laughs> under the, under the, a few stars out tonight as well. Yep, I can see uh, one there. But it's nice, it's like, you know, it's like, whatever time it is, it's got to be close to midnight, hasn't it? And it's like... it's like Yeah, it's like quarter two or something like that. And it's just like, we're out in t-shirts and shorts. Oh, I we're can't. Out, we're out in t-shirts and shorts. Yep. And it's nice. It's, it's a lovely easy. feeling. I don't feel like I could have another layer on. It's been hot. It has been warm. We've had some heat, man. Fucking last week, we managed to have our barbecue in the garden. Oh, yeah, that was great. Even fun. though it like, pissed down with rain all morning, we're like, is it going to work? Mm. But actually, the sun prevailed, and it was lovely afterwards. Yeah, it Stuck was. to it. Ed, Ed got to cook his meat. <laughs> More about that later. Yes. You were... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, pop round. It was fucking. It was very nice, nice and sunny. Just chilled on the fucking lawn, mate. Yeah, it was good, man. Did you, good? <laughs> you and you and Ed drank like seventeen beers we, or something. We were, yeah, we were Each. drunk. We were drunk, man. <laughs> you were fairly like you weren't like all over the place though. You were both just like you just drank an absolute fuckload. Like. Yeah, no, we did. But I felt what well, I was the most drunk I was throughout the whole day was when you and Lucy arrived. <laughs> yeah, that was yeah. the most drunkest I felt throughout the whole day was mm-hmm. when you guys arrived. Literally, the moment you arrived, I felt... Because it's the first time I'd got up and really moved. Mm. I went out the front of the house and was like, oh, my God. It's like, oh, Lord. Oh, that was it, yeah, because we decided to come around the back and you were, like, out the front trying to get us. Fuck. Yeah, yeah, I'd gone to the front and you guys snuck around the fucking back. Tactics, mate. Hmm. Fucking tactics. We've done that fucking before. But, like, the other week it was really hot. Mm. Car passing. And we went to Lizzie's uh, parents. Just to, for, like, just to prove that we're outside. We went to FDI, yeah, I did a sound effect. We paid, we paid a guy to drive past us. Yeah, so we spent all our budget for the next year. <laughs> um, oh, fuck, what was I going to say? Weather. Oh, I had it then. Oh, like the last week was really hot. Yeah, so we went to Lizzie's parents' house for dinner. Mm. And it was, it was that day, it was like the hottest Thursday at the end of July, when it was yeah. like insanely hot. Yeah, yeah. And, um... On the walk down there, we just saw the smoke over in the distance, and there was like a fire in like a community hall or an allotment or something. It just was on fire. Well, like out of control fire. Well, yeah, we saw the big black smoke bellowing over the fucking rooftops. Okay, yeah, that's out of control. And then we were in the garden looking. We heard the fire engine show up, and then not long afterwards, completely opposite direction, we saw another load of smoke coming up. Oh, what? No way. Yeah, man. Like some California forest yeah, yeah, fires. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. Shit. yeah, man. It was fucking hot. Yeah. It's been literally, at the moment, especially in Cheson, because remember that earlier I talked about like the uh, news agent near me being all weird all of a sudden. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You said a bit it's getting weird. a bit Buffy Hellmouth in fucking uh, Cheson at the moment. It's, just, like, it's getting a bit fucking... It's getting a bit rowdy. So somebody was like, like attempted to rob the knife point round no the, down the way. road from us. Yeah, down Elm Road at like two in the morning. <clears throat> what the fuck is happening? Someone's car got like smashed in with a baseball bat down the parade shops. Like, like fucking that dude, that horrible, really sad story. That guy had that hit and run on the, um, I on saw the Friday. About that. Yeah, what the fuck? And he was dragged like 25 feet oh, along with the car. Oh, fucking hell, I didn't know that. Yeah. He was like walking back, and they reckon it was like 
intentional. Because they found at this point, I can't comment any further on the current events, but at this point, allegedly, allegedly after the guy was hit and dragged 25 feet, they found the car that did it burn out a mile up the road. Oh, man, that is fucking, yeah. Bleak fun. again. Yeah, man. <laughs> well, not again, know. that hasn't happened yet. Oh, God, it's, <laughs> it's bleak. That is bleak. Um, but yeah, there's been like, there was a big fire on top of the chip shop near us recently. There was another accident, like it's constantly stuff going on. <laughs> Shit is kicking off. It is insane, there's constantly stuff going on. That's bad, man. Like, it's like, honestly, what the hell? A cat came in my living room the other day. Like, <laughs> <laughs> had to top it all off. Scared the fucking shit out of me. I bet this is windy at the moment. It's not your cat though, is it? It's like... I think it, I think it, it's two doors down, I think. Oh, okay. That's not the name of the cat, but... <laughs> Two doors down. Three doors down. Three doors down, yeah. (laughs) 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 Fucking musicians. (laughs) But uh, yeah, it was. uh, uh, Yeah, I think it's one or two doors down. But I was just sat in the living room watching TV and something caught my eye. I looked and there was a cat just like, was literally there and it instantly (laughs) jumped up on the sofa. (laughs) Good timing. (laughs) It was bad timing. This story, this cat story, is sponsored by sneezing <coughs> and coughing, this and cat, all the other and we. This, this cat, this cat story is sponsored by allergies. This corner where we are now, obviously, you can't see this. This is the corner of uh, Fornhill Avenue, Fornhill we Road. Done. We should have fucking taken people on a tour. <laughs> Less than this, a square is like, mile this is like this is like heading down to this is like Red Line Road where Fawnhill joins, and there's like the parade. There's like a, it used to be like an old pub, but I think it's like an off license now. It's still open. I don't yeah. think it is. I remember going to pick up there once. Like, yeah, me and some random dude, and I showed up, and I had like a t-shirt and a scarf on and, and fingerless gloves. So I thought I was cool. <laughs> Went to Nana Jacks, and we like hung out and spoke did for a while. Did you tell him that? No, he knew. He used to work there. He showed up. He just looked at me and shook his head. And was like, here you go. <laughs> he was like, it's Easter. It's hot. What are you doing? <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> I didn't realise I was meeting the Black Parade today. Man. No. <laughs> <laughs> Bloody hell. But yeah, good times. I always remember. I don't want to pass it. I just remember picking up there. Mate, I was at work the other day and... Um, we have like different radio stations on depending on how annoyed people get with what's playing mm-hmm. and uh, someone uh, clocked it onto Radio 1 in the morning and they had like an hour of just like fucking emo music man wow. like they had like fucking, they played like chemical romance from, like, Jesus. Cool, to 11 in the morning fucking hell and there was like oh mate they had like America, all American rejects playing like, <laughs> that's cool Blink 182 like they had like, all this this fucking like stuff just playing and there was just like no explanation just like yep yeah, change it up do what I want yeah, that's good it lasted a while then oh it was great good I'm glad everyone enjoyed I felt like I was I like, did that <laughs> I felt like I was at uh, I don't know some sort of Music night. Music night. It's like a story for family guy there. I uh, I, uh, I remember oof. going to a sex like convention. A, the first, the first, like they did like a rock night at um, fucking hell, the nightclub by the river, McCluskey's. Yeah, yeah. And uh, we went to it, and oh my god, there was like fucking nine people there. Wow. <laughs> it was a, it, but I mean, they played like a load of cool music and shit, and you know, you can't really go wrong for like three quid for a double whiskey and coke. But like, oh, it was just like, no one, no, everyone was just like, there was literally like, everyone there was just sat on these like three sofas and it was just like, oh, this is, oh, we're all sitting down, are we? This is unfortunate. There's a bus coming. Can you get a swish bus? Another random little memory here. Yeah. This road here, we're walking. I remember walking down this road many, many moons ago. <laughs> with Rob, or Robert Augustus. <laughs> yep. And I was wearing a t-shirt, which I adored. I loved this t-shirt. It was the first thing I ever wore from that Jacks years before I worked there. Yeah. They're just back in like short purple hair days. <laughs> oh, should we go this way? And um, I, uh, it was a pale blue t-shirt and it had like, you know, like the college sort of prints on the front of t-shirts. Oh yeah, yeah. This, one, th- this one had like a big like, um, um, what you fucking throw in the in the water of somebody fucking? Oh What's, my god! What, my legs wet. Oh my god! What is that? Oh, the size of that moth that just fucking. Hit. Is that what hit my leg? Oh my god! That was. I disgusting. felt that. I felt something on my leg. I thought it felt like rain. Uh, my leg. Huge. My leg definitely got wet then. Uh, Honestly, something definitely wet went on my leg. Hit me hand. Weird. It's got high five by a moth. 
and smashed it into my leg and it exploded. Um, so yeah, it was one of the riders on a pale blue t-shirt and it had like a um, rubber dinghy, little rubber dinghy brought you throw in the water when someone's drowning. A uh, live fucking ring. And it said, and it said, Titanic swim, swim team on it. Like, Titanic swim team. And the year the Titanic sunk. Um, <laughs> And walking down, and across the road was like the school bullies walked past, like the group of them. Oh yeah. And one That's of them. What you want to see when you're not yeah. in school, isn't it? And one of them, who was quite a newbie to the group, um, but a bit younger. Ah, oh, a new lo- recruit, eh? Yeah. Looked over at me, and I remember they shouted my name. Yeah. And I was like, oh, and then one of them went like, oh yeah, I bet you're not a very good swimmer. And I went, what? He went, your t shirt. Ah, and they all laughed and walked off. And I remember Rob being like, that, <laughs> Rob, being, I remember Rob being like, but that wasn't funny. <laughs> He's like, your t shirt literally has a joke written on it. Why didn't he just say that? <laughs> like, the joke was there for him. And he just, I didn't even make sense. Yes, but your t shirt says swim team. Well, what's I got? <laughs> You're not a very good swimmer then. I, I, yeah, I get it, I guess, but. <laughs> The t-shirt's better. <laughs> when, I, when I stopped ranting about the incident, I was 27. Mm. <laughs> no, you me taught me around. I was like, yeah, hey, you're right, actually, yeah. Yeah, what fucking idiot. right, mate. That's a shit house. What a shit house. Oh, hilarious. But that's the thing, man. In, in numbers, isn't it? They're all strength in numbers. Yeah, yeah that is it. All, they, even if they hear something that's slightly, like... We went on a school trip to Spain, and, like, three of them went. Maybe mm. two of them. I think two of them went. Yeah. Out, out of, like, the group of six. Two of them came on the trip. And we all got on fine, absolutely yeah, fine. It. And I was like, oh, I've cracked it with friends now. And then you get back, they get back to the other yeah, four, yeah, yeah, and it's yeah, exactly the same. Absolute cunts again. Yeah. I was like, man, we had a great time. What the fuck? That's, mate, that's just, that's it, isn't it? And he could have, he had every fucking chance to turn to his mates. Like, oh, actually, they're all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know what? Let's not end on a downer. No, as Let's we end on a positive. Our destination. We are uh, still out and about. <laughs> We're going to wrap it up. Obviously. Um, thanks for listening. I don't know how this sounded, but uh, it was nice to walk around doing this. I enjoyed it. It was nice. Yeah, Fair bit of fresh air. You know you can, you've, you've listened to 110 episodes of us sitting down and talking. Yeah. Here's the one of us walking around for a few minutes. This is what it's like when we walk places. Oh. What is that on me now? It's, as, you, as you can tell, it's a big ordeal for Joe. I've got fucking spider web on me now. Oh, me too. I've got enjoying it. It's quite nice. You're right. Don't give me that shit. It's nice. All right, guys, thanks for listening. I've been Greg, not afraid of the outdoors. Armstrong, Mr. Jackson. And I have been. What's your name? I've been Joe. What the fuck is that, Jackson? It's a spider. Thanks for listening. The All Seeing Guys podcast is part of Podnose, the UK's leading independent entertainment podcasting network. For episode archives of the All Seeing Guys and all of the shows on the network, visit us at www.podnose.com. You can also follow us on Twitter via at Podnose or send us an email via admin at podnose.com. Podnose.